Everybody obviously knows now who Professor Nikolai Petrovsky is. Professor Petrovsky is the co-founder and chairman of the Adelaide-based biotech company Vaccine. He's also a world-renowned vaccinologist and the developer of the synthetic protein-based COVID vaccine, COVAX, also known as Spikogen. Now, Nikolai's vaccine has had over 2 million doses administered so far in his trial, and he's here today to speak to us about some of the amazing results that are happening. Good morning, Nikolai. Good morning. Now, what can you tell us about the, the stage of the trials in and some of the results that are coming through? So in fact, we've um, completed the primary uh, endpoint in the phase three clinical trials that were done overseas. We've demonstrated uh, high levels of protection against the Delta variant, which up till now has been the, the major uh, variant of concern. Uh, and in fact, we've received uh, approval from the Iranian FDA uh, and since receiving that approval, over 2 million doses of our vaccine has actually been delivered uh, to people in Iran. And obviously, at the moment, we're working hard uh, to try and, and get our vaccine available in, in other countries uh, that have a need uh, for a, a protein-based vaccine. So it's, it, it's uh, really non-stop action now. Um, as I say, in terms of taking our vaccine global. And the approval in Iran, it wasn't an emergency use approval, was it? Yeah, so, so all vaccines around the world um, are being approved under what's called an emergency use uh, authorization. The reason for that is, is normally your phase three trials will, will run uh, for, for longer than um, just the, the minimum time needed to show that the vaccine is actually protective. Um, and so in, in that interim, uh, while the phase three is still running, which it still is for Pfizer and, and for AstraZeneca, those trials are actually still ongoing. Uh, so during that period of time, uh, normally you operate under what's called an emergency use authorization. Uh, the full authorization comes when you've completed all the clinical trials, which, as I say, for all of the vaccines, uh, the trials are still ongoing. Great. So exciting times, 2 million doses. How is the safety profile looking? So, look, um, you know, we've been very excited, uh, obviously, by the fact that, as we predicted, uh, we are not seeing any serious adverse events uh, with our protein-based vaccine. And this is typical, in fact, for protein-based vaccines, because all our, you know, vaccines we give to children uh, are protein-based. And, and so, you know, even though we've given 2 million doses, we haven't seen any myocarditis or thrombosis. Uh, you know, which have been issues with some of the other vaccines. Um, so uh, we have a clean bill of health and we hope that continues going forward. Now, have you started looking at the Omicron uh, vaccine development or do you think yours will also be successful with that? So Omicron is obviously a big challenge. We already know that the mRNA vaccines are not working uh, against Omicron. Uh, there's been uh, data just published in, in the last week showing that people who've had two doses of mRNA have essentially no neutralising antibodies in their blood uh, against Omicron. So we wouldn't predict they would have any protection. And in fact, we've seen people travelling to Australia who've been double vaccinated uh, and, and carrying Omicron uh, infection with them. Um, so so ob obviously we know that the, the other current vaccines are, are not uh, protecting against Omicron. Uh, at this stage, obviously it's too early for us to predict whether or not our vaccine is giving uh, protection against Omicron. Uh, but of course, you know, we, we're always very proactive and so we're, we're actually developing a specific vaccine against Omicron as we speak and we hope to have that available early next year. Um, so no matter what happens, uh, hopefully our vaccine, existing vaccine uh, will, will provide uh, protection as we're seeing against Delta, against Omicron, but if not, uh, then we'll have a backup candidate. 
Now, are we any closer to seeing uh, Spigogen or, or COVAX in Australia? Or has there been any outreach from the government? So look, we're, we're proactively pursuing uh, uh, the approval process with the Therapeutic Goods Administration uh, as we speak. And, and so that's a, uh, obviously an ongoing process. We, we can't predict the timelines of, of that, um, like all regulatory processes. Uh, there's a lot of toing and froing, uh, but so we're hoping um, sometime uh, early next year, uh, you know, we will be able to to get a, uh, a an approval from them. But but as I say, it, it's it's an active process, and um, we can't predict when that might happen. Now, there's been a lot of interest from your average citizen uh, as far as trying to find out and sign up for uh, any upcoming trials, hasn't there, Nikolai? Look, we've had enormous um, interest from, from all over Australia uh, in people wanting access to our vaccine uh, by any available means, whether by enrolling in a clinical trial or, or getting access uh, to the vaccine through, through other channels. And in fact, some people have even proposed um, you know, travelling to Iran where it is available uh, throughout Iran uh, to, to receive the vaccine there, which um, obviously is quite an effort um, to go to. Uh, but yeah, we have over 35,000 people who've registered on our database at uh, vaccine.net, uh, uh, where they're able to express interest uh, in, in being part of the clinical trial program. And so when we have a suitable trial available uh, that might be in the state where those people are, are based, we would then be able to notify them. Uh, uh, so, so as I say, that, that list is, is growing by the day. You know, we've had uh, days where the server has crashed uh, because we've had thousands of people trying to get in and register all at the same time. So we do ask people to be a little bit patient and just realize uh, these are massive numbers who have registered uh, uh, interest on our database. We, we're trying to upgrade the system to cope with those numbers. Uh, but as I say, they're into the tens of thousands and we wouldn't be surprised if they don't reach the hundreds of thousands you know, in, in coming weeks. Now, with the rate of the spread of, of COVID through Europe, especially seeing higher numbers than at any stage during the pandemic, we can no longer say that this is a disease of the unvaccinated, given that more of the population is vaccinated now than when the pandemic started. How effective are these vaccines, if at all? So I think, yes, we, you know, we have to accept that now the, the vast majority of infections in, in Europe you know, the United States, Australia are occurring in, in people who are vaccinated rather than people who are not vaccinated. You know, that, that's a consequence of two things. Obviously, the first is that, that you know, more than, than half the population are vaccinated. Um, and so you would expect more of the infections to occur in the vaccinated population because of that. But it does indicate that the vaccine is not completely effective. Um, and what we now know is that, you know, with those mRNA and adenoviral vector vaccines, which are the only ones that are available currently in Australia, uh, if they do provide some protection, and it, it, to be honest, it is quite modest, the protection against the Delta variant. It's not as strong as it was against the original Wuhan strain. Um, but also we know that, that that very modest protection wears off extraordinarily quickly. Um, you know, over a few months, whereas it was hoped that, you know, um, that protection from those vaccines might be more long lived. Uh, obviously, with our vaccine, we're hoping that the protection is more long lived uh, because traditionally protein based vaccines uh, do give, um, you know, quite long duration of, of immunity. But, but obviously, we, we're still collecting um, that data in the various clinical trials that are ongoing. So we can't say yet whether we're better or not than the mRNA and adenoviral vectors at, in terms of the duration of the protection. Uh, but we can say, you know, the data suggests we are better in terms of cross protection 
uh, against these, you know, different variants that are emerging. All right, Nikolai Petrovsky, thanks so much for your time and for the important work you do, and, and hopefully we'll be able to have you back again soon to announce the beginning of an Australian trial. It's a pleasure.